going to be painting a landscape. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I do know we're going to paint a landscape. And I thank you for being here with me. Uh, since you're doing a landscape, um, I wanted to basically separate the kind of the sky from the ground. So usually I have a, a, a dark background and it would work from black to up, but right now I have a white background. So it happens sometimes. Um, so the first thing I want to show you guys is my actual palette. So this is my palette of paints that I'm going to use. Um, and occasionally I'm going to be going and just taking some paint and putting it on the palette. And you would have to do that too at home because it's pretty impossible to just measure the exact paint that you're going to need. So the first thing I want to start with is I'm going to take a little bit of the blue. And then I'll have a little tad of light blue right here too. I'm going to take, I'm just going to mix those kind of together. Um, to kind of start with my sky. Now this is just a foam board, so I don't advise using these, but I wanted to give something simple to start with something simple because you can get these you know, down the street at the local Walmart or Dollar Tree, whichever one's closest. So I'm just going to kind of start with the sky. Now I know you guys see like, why am I brushing it? And it's like, it's looking like this. Well, that's because you can't paint without something called water or agua, right? So I have my, my, my little paint straight on. I'm mixing colors and let's see. That makes it a little bit better. Okay. So right now you're like, wow, yo, this is a nice sky. So just because it's a uh, kind of a more darker blue doesn't mean it necessarily will be a night sky. It's just... This is like kind of the first base layer. And for all of you viewers at home, um, painting, many people be like, I don't know how to paint, I don't know how to paint, I don't understand it. And and I understand, I totally understand. It's very difficult. I don't think anybody really can master it because like they say, artists are really never finished with their own work and we are worst critics. So, I mean, it's just a process, but it's just a process of layering. So if you're just layering something, you can always change it. So if you make a mistake, you just let it dry. That's the only part you have to wait on is letting it dry. And then you just change it, right? So say we're getting our sky together and I'm like, you guys are like, what is he doing, right? Now, the next color I'm going to choose is the green. So I want you guys to see the green, and I'm going to use a different brush for that. I, I suggest, you know, you can get all these things at Walmart or, you know, Dollar Tree. Probably more so the brushes you get at Walmart. Um, but Dollar Tree has some good stuff, too. So, again, this is not expensive. I am now going to get another little sponge. So right now I've just been using sponge brushes. This is going to represent my tree. Now, when I get to the details, I'm going to show you start using the, the actual brushes, like the nice, nice little teeny weeny brushes like this. But for right now, we're just going to focus on that. So I'm going to take my kind of darker green right here, and then I have a lighter green right here. But I'm going to start with my darker green, because usually if we're working up, we want to put the darker colors first for the base. So I'm just going to grab some, okay, just like that. And then I actually am going to take a little tiny bit of black and just add to it. Not too much. So just like a pinch. That's all I did. And I'm going to go to it. Because although I want it to be basically the color green, I do want to make it a little bit more earth tone, natural. And so putting a little bit of black kind of adds to that. So then I'm going to go and I'm just going to, not too much, I'm just going to kind of, 
add to this. And not all the way, um, I would say down. I'm just adding a little bit just around the horizon so far. So again, I'm just mixing my darker green right now. And then maybe, you know, you just get a little pinch of black and you put in there, you mix it in there. Just because this is our base green. So this is going to be a mix of dark, um, you know, the trees are going to be, I'm sorry, a mix of dark. They're going to be a mix of uh, lights and kind of medium tone greens. Okay. So, and again, you don't want the black to be showing so heavy. I'm actually going to put a little bit more green, the color of the green in here. And you just want to go down, just like tab it a little bit, but you don't want to get too much, too much in there. Okay, and again, we're just talking about the tops right now, where the white is. Okay, we're just going for that. And we want to make sure we color, cover any white spots that are showing. Okay, so we don't want those to be showing. So just for time's sake, I'm gonna just actually just kind of sweep my brush like that and get another little pinch of that black in there just to kind of make for a few more. Okay. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of white, as you guys can see. Some green. Just gonna let it dry a little bit of white. Kind of like Mix those two together until I have like a light colored green. I'm just gonna go in there and kind of cover this up here. Because essentially, this is the land that we're creating. That's like I said, between the, it's gonna be between where the trees are. Right now, I'm going through some of the trees, um, but right now we're just doing the land that you hit before you hit the trees. So, you know, you're like, what? What am I, what am I hitting? Well, right now I'm taking the white and the green that I mixed, and I am going in. And I am creating just like open lawn to walk on. Okay, so this is what I call open green. I like open green like some of the young kids are thinking, but open green, this is what I call, okay? The open green is where you can walk, you can have a picnic maybe, you know, you can do things with it. Okay, but again, I'm not extending the open green all the way down because I don't know what's gonna be down here yet. I don't know if it's extending. I'm just kind of getting those base colors on, um, not adhering to any detail or anything like that. Okay. So then a little bit more of the open green here. I'm gonna go back up. You want to hit those, you want to make sure there's not like a lot of white spots poking. So you might have to go back up and, um, and just try not to, you know, get too much of the, the darker black on your brush because it, you will have to kind of wipe that up. Okay. As you can see, it kind of shows up sometimes. All right. So it looks like. Now we're just going to, as it kind of gets lower, it gets a tad greener, but there. That's also because like there's smog and clouds can make some parts of the land look lighter just because it's just paler, makes everything paler. Okay. I haven't even talked about mountains yet, but I'm gonna get to mountains here in a second. So up here we have some like land and it could be used as mountains. I mean, you could put mountains there, you could do things with it. Um, here, I'm just going to extend this land a little bit over here. But it's it's not something that a lot of people look at as a necessity because if you have trees and you have other things in, involved, you might not even see the mountains. But in some cases, you might want to have them shown or a little peak. 
So with this painting, I'm going to have a little peak shown. You'll see after I do the, again, the green and the white. We'll make kind of like that. Kind of. But first, I kind of focus on the trees because somehow I feel like I can merge the trees into the mountains, depending on what the color of the mountains are. I think of the mountains as being like a grayish here. But one of the things I might need to do first is go into how I would set it up. So I'm going to say, when I tell kids to do a mountain, it's like a squiggly line. It's like a squiggly line going up and down. Okay? I'm just going to actually take the grayish kind of color I said. We'll have a little bit of green in there. Just going to represent my mountain. And then I'm just going to go kind of up. Down, up, down, just like a squiggly line. That's all it is. You'll find out that once upon doing it, you've created, well, a mountain piece. So you have all these mountain peaks, right? It's like put a whole bunch of white on your, and I'm just going to, certain parts are just going to be kind of highlighted. So I know, well, maybe the the sun or whatever is hitting certain parts of it, just like that. Nothing. Just making a few adjustments. So right now you're kind of looking and you're like, well, I kind of see. And you're seeing you're putting this over a little bit of the trees too. So the trees are going to kind of merge in when we're done here with the mountain. So right now you have a mountain range over some trees and then you have some land. I am, you can even put a little bit of highlights of whatever the mountain snow is down here. You can kind of blend in with the grass as well. And just putting a few of those here. Cause we want to make sure that, well, we know where like the end of the mountain kind of comes. So now you have your mountain range and you have some grass down here and you want to do more trees, but you want to do more evergreen type trees. But you also want to maybe have like a pond or a river of some sort down here. So this could be a very, very complex picture. I actually want to go in and I want to kind of map out where I want my river to be right now. That way it'll be easier when I'm doing the rest of this. But I'm going to do that in the form of taking my light green, my white, remember my white, and then my regular green, right here, okay? I'm going to do that in the form of taking those two, probably with whatever I have on my brush, and then kind of um, mapping some sort of creek that maybe like starts here, it comes up through here, and then this kind of separates one end of the spectrum from the other. But at the same time, I don't want this to kind of be the thing that's like, so this creek, whatever, it gradually will get bigger and it'll go up down like that. Okay, down here. Right, so I'm separating this just so you guys can see. I'm just taking light green right now and just putting down here because that's going to represent the bottom part of my painting. Okay. So, and again, there's nothing. I'd say too hard or too difficult about this. You're just filling it up. So we're going to fill all this up right now. Okay? basically in a mapping out stage and the mapping out stage involves all the layers um, that come first. So our first base is the blue, the green, and 
you know, whatever other color you use. Now, you could do this at home. You could do this at, at work if your boss allows it, you know. I don't know if you can do it, like, at a bank or something like that because I think it might, like, interfere. It might be, like, maybe doing too much, you know, what I mean, the kids say. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is something. You could do this on vacation when maybe you're, you know, you, you need therapy, but the, there's no person that can give you therapy. So by doing an act like painting, it could be your therapy because so right now, I'm just kind of smoothing out that top as well. So when you're going through it, you want to kind of smooth the paint. Because, um, again, you're going to be making layers, so you want the other paint to lay on fine. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this bottom as well with the green. I don't know why I still have the pen in my hand. I don't need the pen, but I still have it in my hand. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just move this over like that. Okay. All right, so now that we have that green kind of outline here, we know kind of where our river is going to flow. But what I did want, I did discuss is that there's actually going to be trees in front of this. So I'm going to kind of map those out right now just so we can see where they are before we actually get to the mountain and some of the details in the sky. Okay. So I'm going to take, because some of these trees are going to be called um, albino type trees, I like to call them. But what we're going to first do is we're just going to kind of map out where those are going to be. All right, so our next uh, step that we're going to take a look at is the actual trees that are going to kind of be coming in front of the actual, um, will be the first thing that we see in the painting. So we'll be looking and the view will see the trees first and we'll see the background. And those are going to kind of just like overlap some of the river on the side. So I'm just going to take, actually, I'm going to take the trees. I'm going to take a, brush kind of about, you can see they're about that size, okay. So in comparison to like our sponge, all right, that's the size of brush we probably want. I'm going to take some white, I'm just going to go, yeah. what are you doing? Are you ruining it? No, I'm not ruining it. Just place them on trees where they need to be. All right. So these are, trees aren't going to be too thick. Again, these are those types of trees that you see. Um, they're, they have like those little black marks on it. Where is this escaping me right now? But I will remember what the, the tree is by the end of the segment. Like, oh, what type of art teacher is this? He's remembered. You know, it's been a long day. It's been a while. So you do see that we do have uh, trees sprouting up here. I'm going to put a couple over here as well. They're going to be coming from both sides. So of course you're going to see the actual, um, you know, background of the mountains or whatever. But you also will know that there will be trees overlapping that, okay? And then just so you guys know, there's gonna be another one here. Um, your trees don't have to be white. I'm just making mine white for this particular picture. But your trees could be whatever color you want it to be, okay? Now, I'm gonna go into detail with the actual tree in a second, but I did wanna let you guys know that you can put branches for your tree, okay. Um, I just make little lines. I don't actually make too many like blocks. Like I know in elementary school we're taught to be like, oh, a branch, like this is my tree. But it could just literally be some lines like that, okay, for the branch if you want to do the branch. Okay. So again. 
Uh, and I'm even putting these white lines, so now they're like, you're like over, it's like, I don't know what you're doing with mountain lines. But a lot of trees. I'll put some more branches over here. Okay. Now, before I go to the leaves, I'm gonna put a few more trees. So let me just take a little bit more white um, to kind of cover this kind of area so it's like a circle view. So we can still see through the view, but we'll kind of be surrounded by trees. So even like where we're standing, there's probably trees. And like these will be shorter so you can see the actual like height of the ones here. And then some of the trunk as well. Let's extend some of the trunk for this one. Okay. Okay, now we're like, well, you know you're covering up most of the the green. Well, no. Because the green is still the base color, it was the front color. Um, so the trees are coming along on this side. I'm going to put some more on this side. Once you cover kind of this all with trees, you'll see that, oh, your picture, it looks much different than it first started right and that's the process of painting it's because it's layering that's that's literally what you do it's popping itself pop it up it's gonna it's popping out like katie got there pop out okay all right Okay, so we still see the mountains. We're gonna see them. Not all the trees. So you're gonna. This is just gonna be a few leaves because this is. It's gonna be coming more to fall. So we're gonna have a lot of trees actually on the ground, which I'm gonna get to in a second. Um, after I do the mountain. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to actually, before I go back to the trees, I want to go in and kind of highlight the grays in the mountain. I want to take my white and I'm going to mix it with a little bit with my black. My black's over here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of black, a little bit of white, and I'm going to make a gray color. Okay, my grays, first color I'm going to use is going to be kind of like a medium color, not too dark, not too light. And you kind of just kind of lay it kind of next to the whites. You don't want any on the whites because the white, remember, is the highlight. Um, but you want to go in and you want to at least kind of, so we know, the viewers, that your mountain is kind of the gray. You're going to go in with some lighter whites in a second. Okay, so around the whites. Again, you're not going on the whites. You're going around the whites with the grayish color, okay? And that's gonna represent the mountain. I'm gonna dip my brush in a little bit of water just for this. Oh. So we can have that gray pop out a little bit more. Okay, so now you see it. Um, when I dipped it in water, it made it a little bit lighter, but that's okay, because you're still, the mountains is a process. I mean, the mountains is pretty much layering throughout. Um, And now I'm kind of twirling the. Now let me jump back down to my trees because remember I was telling you about those little marks that you can put on the tree. I want to first focus on the shadows of my tree. So I know my trees have shadows, and it's similar to the gray that's actually in the mountain. So I'm going to take that same kind of gray I had, but I'm going to start with the outer edge of my trees, and I'm just going to make it, I'm going to put that, that shadow. Because these trees are 3D, and eventually um, there's going to be a shadow on it somewhere, right? Now, not all of them have the same shadow. 
So that's the, the the other important part. So even when blending the shadow, you know, you still got to come back in with some white. Most of these trees, except for this one, um, are going to have a central shadow. So it'll be where you see, you know it's rounded only because of the central shadow. I'm going to start going a little bit lighter than some of the ones over here. So maybe these have a different way the sun's hitting them. Even, as you can see, I didn't, I didn't paint the sun yet as well. Okay. The trees are, are really layered, so we're not going to be done with these for a while. But you got a good grip on at least where they are located. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to put some of these little marks. So it's almost like I'm making those oh, 101 Dalmatian trees, where those trees where you, you see those marks and you're like, wait a minute, those are... And I'm also going along some of the trunks, just like kind of highlighting where the tree is, only because, well, obviously, um, we want to kind of not have things blend in, so. Okay, so right now you just, you can see I'm just kind of like marking these. That's how the birch trees really are. They're just marked and it's not nothing that's really solid. So I'm kind of like scratching. You don't want, that's why you don't want too much water on your actual brush, because this would be hard to do if you did. It would be leaking, and you don't really want anything to leak with these types of trees. Okay, to the back, as you can see. darker gray and towards the black and to the mountain as well. So right here on my palette I have yellow right here and then I'm going to mix some green over there to do the highlights in my trees. So I took the yellow Just do that. I like to sometimes even smear it with my finger a little bit, just so you know. Oh. And it's like little pecks. That's all I'm doing. Little pecks. I call them pecs. Some people call them dots. Some people call them whatever. I call them pecs. And then I'm also going to, and again, you can smear. You don't have to smear everything. I don't smear them all, but you can. And then I'm going to do the opposite with the, the land. Instead of being light green, it'll just be dark green. So just use, you know, the darker green or the regular green, dark green. Um, I made a little bit of black to represent like this. This is land, like we know this is land, the thing, and like maybe where the trees are, this shadows. So some of these will represent shadows under the trees. We know they cost, they cast shadows. We really know when we get um, our leaves that they're gonna cast a lot of shadows, but we want people to know that this is land. This is your land. This is my land. This land is my land. But I do remember that part. Let me see. 
so I'm sure they show the viewer at home who the Lord they are because they know. Oh, he doesn't remember the part. So I'm just putting this, adding this little hue underneath most of the trees. All the trees don't have to have it. Um, but some of them can. Um, so you can kind of generate. You're trying to generate a, a presence of 3D, and that's kind of the whole point. Again, that's just green and dark green. That's the color I'm creating underneath the tree. If you ever make it big smudges, you can always just like use your hand to like. Okay. okay, so this is okay right now because you're gonna have leaves anyway, like everywhere in a second. Um. So putting this and then like smear it with your hand is okay. Okay, even up here in the To kind of generate your land is kind of, you can walk on it. Because right now, it, it, if it's too smooth, it's not going to look like land and you don't like that, right? Okay. So I'm going to take the light blue and the white, actually, and then my color of my sky is going to, well, I mean, my color of my water is going to be a lighter blue. Okay, so I want to keep it around that blue. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put the base of where it is. Of course, your water is going to have detail. You don't want it to have detail. It's going to get a lot of fucking water. Um, but you can't necessarily do with land, and I like that. You gotta kind of have a plan of where you want to put things. And, like, even when you're making things up, like, I'm making this up as I go, but you kind of want to at least know where the basis of where everything is. And then from there, you can kind of modify. Now let me go back here. Here, I'm just gonna put a little bit of it. And I'm putting it here. I'm gonna smear it after. Okay, and I'm just doing this with my hand. Now, I don't, you could do it with a piece of paper, a paper towel, a napkin. I'm just doing this with my hand. I want to also put it on these trees. I'm going to kind of minimize the height on that tree right there. Because I think that one is a little, little bit too tall. Okay, and again, uh, you can use your hand. A lot of times I advise people, I say, why don't you, you already have the blue on your brush. You can do one area there, wait till it dries. Because again, painting is layering. So you do want to make sure um, that things are dry before you like actually go to it. Because otherwise they don't start mixing the paint, then you'll be unhappy. And nobody wants to be unhappy, right? Nobody wants to be unhappy. So that's why we do this. Okay. I'm going to go back over here. I'm just going to add some highlights in the sky. I know we're going to have some clouds. Clouds have shadows too. So this side is going to have a few more clouds. The clouds are whatever are going to be coming up from one end. Of the but you're not going to still see a lot of this because we're going to add. Our leaves are actually going to be a fall color, so an orangish mix of, you know, mix of orange, reddish, um, just fall colors. And then we're gonna actually have some fall to the ground as well. Right now, I just mixed yellow and red, and I got an orangey color. So right now, it kind of comes out like that. It's not bad. I might want to put a little bit more yellow in there. Okay, and what I appear to be doing now is I'm just making these. They're just little, okay, like little dips. Dashes. That's all we're doing. Okay, I wouldn't necessarily do a circle because leaves aren't really that shape, but some people might want to do that. 
Okay, I'm just making an orange now, and I'm going to be mixing. I'm going to be orange, yellow, reds, um, greens, maybe even a purple. I have seen like a purple type of color used before, and I think a lot of that probably had to do with Some leaves on the ground. And you're gonna have leaves everywhere. Okay. Everywhere. Fall time is a beautiful time because the color orange is prevalent everywhere. Orange, oh, and brown. Brown's another color of leaf. There's many different nice color browns of leaves too that we're gonna incorporate as well. And so I'm covering some of these up because I don't think every space you have to see the water, right? Like, so here we might not see the water or you know, here we might not see it. Okay, because we're covering some of those up. I'm going to go back to my darker brown up here and I'm going to go in and those are going to be some of those darker areas. And that, that'll be the connections between certain leaves that you'd be like, well, you don't understand why they're that color or something like that. Well, now you'll understand kind of. <laughs> and again, this just becomes a blend of everything. That At one point, you should get this really nice blend of just colors and leaves. Like, you know they're leaves. You might have to go in and physically draw some more branches though too. So don't think that the branches like disappear or anything because that doesn't happen at all. Okay, so I'm gonna go in now, put some of the darker. I'm just darker leaves. Right now I'm doing darker, which is kind of outlining where the other leaves are. Again, it's good you need to have leaves that pop out. But you don't want to have so much paint on your brush as just a side note because if you do, it can trip and then it gets all over. As you can see, it's becoming really, it's like really dot like. You're like, oh, it just looks like he's putting dots. And it really, that's really what it is. And some people have always made things harder than what they, you know, there's always somebody that makes something harder than what it is. And those people usually have the hardest time painting and that's why they complain. And they, but it's really not that hard. Okay, I'm gonna go over here now. And get... Okay, and so this is a process. This is just like one of the first layers for the leaves. There's gonna be multiple layers because leaves are gonna be the essence of the painting. And as well as the mountains in the sky. So we want in the river. So we want to just make sure that you guys all understand at home that it's the essence of the painting. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going in with the yellow and just putting more of the highlights, kind of mapping them out so we can actually see oh, that the tree's full. I don't want to make the tree have only a few leaves on one side and then the other side not have any. And I want the, the marks that we make to be just as apparent so you can see on the tree. Alright, 
so you just don't go back in this. So you can kind of see texture. Next thing I'm going to do is highlight some areas in the water, give the water a little bit of shine. Imagine it just by putting little dashes. Just little dashes. So I have pure white, and that's all I'm doing. Adding that to my water. And I'm not adding it everywhere, as you can see. There's just little. strokes just, just strokes other places I would make those as bright though just because you know the sun's already coming from the sort of so we know the sun's coming from the center then this would be okay but it it was coming from one place also common to the gray so take a little bit of yellow green a light green there that will come into the grass. Let's go back up to the mountains for really quick. Don't want any of the blue showing in the mountain. Really quick, like for real, for real. So we do our best to kind of get rid of that so it doesn't show. really briefly to the tree. So I wanted to go back and make sure that the shadow showed up in the actual tree and then the highlight showed up as well. So right now, let's go back to the shadows. Remember that was like a medium gray? The medium gray I'm gonna add to make sure I see all my shadows because from here I can't see all my shadows. I am 
climate change support, change a climate change supporter. I do believe that um, we can do a better job of taking care of our environment for years to come um, for the babies that will be taking over this planet for years to come. So we want to make sure that if you put too much paint on your your palette that you actually um, still try to save it. Other than that, just try to put a little bit of paint on your palette because if you put too much paint, um, you might be like, oh, the painting's done, and then you end up throwing so much paint away. Or if you have a painting like this one that might take more than, um, you know, a few hours, your paint could dry while you're still painting, and then but you put too much paint, so you didn't have to do it. So I just tell people just just a word of caution. A word of caution. It saves you more money in the long run, and you have less paint. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure. Kind of get that gray. So remember that darker gray is creating these shadows for my trees to give them a little bit more of a a three D. Trying to go for their nice um, trees. Okay, so this one doesn't look like it has any gray or shadow on it at all. I do not like that. Okay, so this one's shadow is completely about to have shadow. Okay, kind of getting that there. Now, of course, we want to go back and see, make sure we have branches coming through. Um, again, you don't need this, your branches everywhere, um, but you would like to have them somewhere. So if you do have them, you want to make sure that they're kind of pointed out where you know that it's a branch. Okay. So again, I'm going to put some over here. This and you also would want to highlight your branches as well. Okay, so right now I'm just adding little branches. You know, when I was teaching, a lot of my students uh, would get so like frustrated. They'd be like, when they'd see the, the ending example of the project, they'd be like, I can't do that. I can't do that. But what they didn't realize was, is that there wasn't a right or wrong answer. So with branches, it's just an example. There's not a right or wrong answer. You don't know, have to put it, a branch exactly where you think it should go. And, things like that. So I'm looking over here and I'm thinking I want to actually expand my water a little bit to come this way and then maybe back up again. And I think it'll give more of a, a fictitious angle. It'll take away that fictitious angle of uh, my light. So I'm going to go that back and I'm going to make that get that blue again. That blue that I love so much. Okay. Um, once I get the blue, I'm going to go in and just literally block out some of it. Okay, so the blue is mixing in with the green, but that's okay because some water has green in it, and that's not so bad. But now we can extend this a little bit to come here because I actually felt like there should be a boat or something on the water that we can kind of see in the background. Nothing overbearing. Nothing overbearing. So let's just go in here and do that. And then so what I'm actually doing is I'm creating at first I didn't want there to be a spacer here. 
But now I kind of do. So I'm creating another barrier that's just blue. But it's going to go back up. Up right there. Okay, so we just gave it a little bit more room for our river so we could see the rest of our trees. Okay. So then I'm going to take the blue, the dark blue, and kind of go in and kind of make sure And not everywhere needs dark blue. And you'll be like, why are you, what are you doing? It's there just this color. Well, these are going to be painted over again, but we're just trying to create some, I want to say depth. I don't know if that's the right word, to our painting. So just give it some, some realistic qualities by making it more. Because when you really look at war, it, the reflection, it's amazing. You get to see all these colors because it's reflecting everything it sees. Um, onto the water via the sun, of course. So, Okay. Lastly, before I go to the, oops, that's what happens when you put too much paint. Remember, we talked about that. But I actually like the way that kind of turned out because it could be the snow coming down. Um, but we want to go back to those shadows for the actual uh, ground. And I'm going to go black because I know I was at darker colors. And I'm just going to go with that black. very good for shadows, they help with shadows, but they actually make the shadows look like they are good to do. Okay? And the other thing that I was thinking about is, well, we have a space where we could put something, like a rock or something. So I'm just going to like kind of position here. here but, but there's nothing really here to say that oh what the I don't even know what the space does. Okay. So then I just did a smudge with whatever I had on my brush. Did some highlights. Let me get some white to highlight some things. Okay. I'm gonna take some gray. Texture. I 
doing there. Alright, so the sky. So we could probably leave that blue over there the way it is. Really, the clouds aren't going to be too much different um, in color wise as the mountains, but we just want to highlight a few. Really, we just do that by a highlight because we already kind of have the mark, which I just kind of made of where we want the clouds to kind of go. Okay, remember, clouds are sporadic, so there's no right or wrong way of how to make a cloud. Um, but as you can see, it's just, it's kind of, just like some kind of dash of dots, I see. Okay, and then again, they all kind of take up a lot of that. So everybody knows, now of course I never finish anything, and I'm not finished with this one, but everybody knows before you end a painting, you have to design it. So I just take a little bit of black, okay? And then you just go Voila! Basic fall landscape, basic in every way. Um, Billy Jackson here, episode one of Billy Jack painting series. Next week, we will be painting a new um, painting. It might be a landscape, it might be a portrait. You'll never know unless you tune in next week. I thank you again and have a great evening.